least our first two uh, participants that I that I know their outcomes very well are doing extremely well from this surgery. And our participant has actually been seizure free for almost a year now. Fellow Homo sapiens, welcome back to Epilepsy Sparks Insights. Now, today I confess you will hear me getting more than a little bit excited. So imagine if a stem cells could be developed and used to prevent seizures from occurring. Well, today, neurologist and neuroscientist David Spencer shares with us his research into inhibiting temporal lobe seizure activity through interneuron cell therapy, which he shall kind of explain because yeah, I ha would have no idea how to do that. But please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to the channel. Your comment and your like will help spread awareness of the epilepsies around the world. It's great to be here, Tori, and thanks for the invitation. I really appreciate it. I'm an uh, adult epileptologist. Uh, I work in the United States in uh, Portland, Oregon, uh, at a center called Oregon Health and Science University. So we have a comprehensive epilepsy center and we take care of lots of people with epilepsy from mild mild epilepsy to the, kind of the most complicated challenging cases helping with medical management in some cases helping with uh, guiding people through the process of epilepsy surgery or more kind of advanced therapies for for treatment of epilepsy could you tell us how much of your time is spent um, say in clinical work versus research i would say i'm more of a clinician than a researcher i probably spend um, Two thirds of my time doing clinical work, um, a little bit more administrative role lately actually has, has taken over a little bit, but it's 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 interesting as well. And then uh, and then research uh, maybe maybe you know a third or so. I mean, to me personally, and many people I speak to, research is crucial when it comes to uh, giving hope to people affected by the epilepsies. What do you focus on when it comes to the research? Yeah, I've been interested in a number of different areas. One is is neuroimaging of epilepsy, trying to understand better how we can identify a seizure focus, what kind of different tools can be used um, to understand the brain structure and function. Um, I've been interested in uh, neurostimulation or neuromodulation. I know you had a uh, podcast on that not, not too long ago, um, covering that topic. And then uh, I think something we're hopefully we're going to talk about a little bit today, which is a new area for me, is looking at uh, cell therapy for treatment of epilepsy. So tell us about that cell therapy. I know it sounds a little bit scary to some people, but I think it sounds fascinating. What are the basics of that? It's a really interesting, I think really appealing concept to, to me and to patients that I've talked to about it. And the idea is that, um, I mean, it's, it's a little bit of a simplistic idea maybe, but in the brain, when someone's having seizures or is more prone to seizures, there's some imbalance between the kind of the cells in the brain that are more excitatory and cause the you know the cells that they're connected to to fire more rapidly and then those that are inhibitory or might kind of be the breaks or slow down uh, the firing of brain cells or neurons and so you know trying to keep that balance between excitation and inhibition is really critical to to help stabilize things and prevent seizures from happening so the approach with the cell therapy is kind of a line of cells has been developed that are kind of the natural inhibitory cells of the brain. And the strategy then with this, with this research is to actually implant these cells into the seizure focus. And they, they have the ability to uh, make connections with the, the, the person's own brain cells in the area and kind of add to the uh, in, inhibition or the ability to kind of break things or, or, or uh, slow down things to prevent seizures. Uh, are these like complete cells that you put in or is this like the whole shebang you put in like lumps? It's the whole shebang. Yeah, we're, these are cells that um, have been they're They're derived from stem cells, but it's not actually stem cells. They're they're um, developed from stem cells and then they're they're um, they develop down a path into these actual inhibitory cells that um, are mature cells. The challenge, of course, is getting them into the right spot uh, safely. So these are actually, they're surgically implanted um, into the seizure focus. And then they, um, they can migrate, they can recognize um, cells in the area, make connections, make synapses, and uh, actually integrate into the circuitry. This is amazing. So thinking of these stem cells, how do these specific stem cells, maybe I'm going into, oh, this is an, uh, we'll have an obvious answer, but um, how do they know to form uh, 
brain cells instead of other types of cells if they're stem cells? That's the um, it, in the actual development of the cell line that's used for the therapy. Um, oh. You can give different sort of trophic factors or di different sort of um, uh, treatments to kind of encourage them down a particular path of development so that they can be kind of trained to develop into a certain cell type. It's like focusing on a specific, you know, muscle area and you and you train that in the gym and you've kind of done something similar for these stem cells to become the neurons that we need. Exactly. So you can get a very kind of pure culture of of these inhibitory cells that um so the important one important thing is that they no longer are have the capability to divide. So the stem cells can kind of keep dividing and make more and more cells. These are a little farther down the path, so they're actually now kind of determined to be inhibitory cells and if they're implanted then they they will no longer divide so there's you know the idea is to not have the risk of having cells that continue to divide and could potentially develop a tumor or something so they're, they're carefully screened to avoid that problem that's so cool at what stage in this research are you so have you been using rodents a more mature or sort of uh, other animals i've used them in humans yet Yes, um, all of the above. So there's there's a, a long history of what we call preclinical studies, you know, animal studies using animal models of epilepsy. Um, a lot of them done in in rodent models. So um, mice that have uh, have a you know have epilepsy that's resistant to treatment with anti seizure medications, and then have the cells implanted. And I mean they. They did remarkably well. About two thirds of the mice became completely seizure free, even in these very kind of resistant refractory models of epilepsy. So that was very, very encouraging. Um, there were a lot of studies to look at, you know, how do you scale this up? What would be the right kind of dose of cells for a human? Because a human's uh, temporal lobe, hippocampus, which is what we're targeting right now, is is much larger than uh, a mouse's. So that, there was a lot of work to look at that. Yeah, about two years ago, we started participating in this first in human study of inhibitory stem cell implants in, in people. So um, at our center, we had the second patient in the world who ever uh, received this therapy, which is, was, very, was very exciting. And now there have been um, seven uh, patients who have received this therapy, um, three more plans. So kind of the first wave of 10 implants is well underway and, and uh, planned. And the outcomes so far in the humans, have they been overall positive? It's been very positive. You know, it, we uh, heavy note of caution because this is very, very early days. Yeah. This stage of this of the study is focused mostly on safety. So uh, we want to make sure that there aren't any um, unexpected, unintended consequences of doing the implants. Uh, we're studying first um, people, like a very narrow group of patients that have seizures coming from temporal lobe and in particular coming from hippocampus. A lot of your viewers or listeners may be aware of all this, but the middle middle part of the temporal lobe. And so um, one nice feature of that design of that selection of people is that um, if they don't get an adequate response or um, there's any complications, they could still go on to have uh, what might be a more traditional kind of treatment for drug-resistant epilepsy coming from the temporal lobe, which might be a, a temporal lobe surgery or a laser ablation. What could potentially be the benefits of a, a person having cell therapy compared to, say, a resection or laser ablation? Yeah, that's a great question. And that's one of the reasons why I find this area really, really exciting is that it's um, the idea is that it's more potentially of a restorative therapy rather than a destructive approach. So with with epilepsy surgery, you know, we're trying to um, people who've been through this process know there's a long, often a long process of trying to identify exactly where the seizure focus is. Would it be safe to treat surgically? And then um, you know, with surgery, with laser ablation, with different techniques, the idea is to try to identify and basically remove or destroy the tissue that's causing the seizures. And, and um, you know, we do go to great lengths to try to ensure the safety of that. But sometimes there are some trade-offs of um, some of that tissue may be, still be functional, even though it's causing problems by initiating the seizures. Um, so with this approach, the idea would be you could um, 
you know, effectively treat the seizures without having to destroy or remove any brain tissue. You're kind of rebalancing or restoring function rather than um, being a destructive procedure. So that, that idea is really, really appealing. Gosh, yeah, no, totally. I mean, one of the biggest things that um, well, I'll moan about as well as um, other people affected um, and who may have had a, a resection is that memory, oh my goodness, cognitive function is just horrific often. Not for everyone, as you know, but sometimes, especially if you've had the resection, it's, and it can be feel like a real sort of cognitive disability sometimes. And so to me personally, that's why your work sounds very appealing. If you can prevent that from happening, that would be pretty fabulous. Yes. I mean, we can't, we can't make claims about that yet, but I think that is one of the, um, one of the reasons this approach is being looked at. And, um, uh, and that is clearly one of the risks with, with the surgical sort of approach, with a resective surgery approach. Have you identified any side effects of this treatment so far? the stage of the research, the main focus is on safety. And so we have not seen um, any serious adverse events, any unexpected side effects from surgery so far. Again, seven, seven people have received the, the therapy to this point. Um, the participant at our center has now is now about a year and a half into um, treatment. And the longest uh, person is coming up on two years pretty soon this summer. Um, and so it's, it's not designed as a, um, as an efficacy study or really to establish definitively how effective this is. But having said that, our, at least our first two, uh, participants that I, that I know their outcomes very well are doing extremely well from this surgery. And our, our, our participant has actually been seizure free for almost a year now. How frequent were the seizures before? Yeah, so they 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 came into the study having a mix of different seizure types, but you know between eight and fifteen per month. So it's really it's really been dramatic. What's the next stage of your research? The next stage would be a um, would be a, a small study that's focused more on efficacy. Um, so that's um, slated probably to begin in twenty twenty five. Once we kind of get through um, these. The planned uh, analysis was for, for 10 people looking at safety primarily. And so once they get far enough out to ensure that the safety looks very good, uh, the next stage would then be um, a larger group looking at how effective it is. And it sounds like everything's moving rather quickly as well. It's happening slowly but quickly, both at the same time. Um, so we're we're trying to um, you know be careful to temper our excitement. There's a you know a history that goes back. There was a lot of uh, work done in cell therapy for Parkinson's disease um, 25, 30 years ago. It was extremely exciting at the beginning. They ran into some problems. Some of the bigger trials then didn't. Uh, didn't establish that it was as effective as it looked like initially, but um, that a lot of that work led to this, that, that, you know, to develop the technology that allowed us to pursue this uh, for epilepsy. And then there's now a definite resurgence of this work in Parkinson's again, and some very encouraging early results from those more recent Parkinson's studies too. So I guess be excited, but don't be too excited. Because it's science, we never know. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a trick, but we, you know, we don't want to oversell it until we really understand uh, the bigger picture. Thank you so much to David for sharing with us his exciting research into treating temporal lobe epilepsy using stem cells. To learn more about David's research into using these stem cells as a treatment for temporal lobe epilepsy with Neurona Therapeutics, do check out the links below this recording. If you haven't already, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and see you next time.